Let's pray. Oh, Father, you are the first and the last. You give us strength of mind that we may walk the path of obedience and discipleship. Guide our thought, guide our thoughts and our emotions, that we may stand in your way this day. Encourage our hearts, that we may sit with you forever. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Thank you for coming this day. I mean, many of us or others. Are sick and they are unable to come to church today. But thank you for coming. Thank you that you are okay. And I'm sorry for those who are sick this day. And may God shine upon all those who are sick. And then may God heal them, not just their bodies, but also all of our hearts. Mind and souls. <clears throat> We are reading the Lord's Prayer, and then this week and next week, uh, we will we will finish the Lord's Prayer next week. And the next petition after the plea for our daily bread, what we thought about last week, is the forgiveness of debts and sins. This petition comes between the request for provision and protection. In this praying, we ask God to forgive us while we forgive others. This petition teaches us that we are sinners who need God's forgiveness. The Greek word translated that in the passage of Philemon. Appears twice in the New Testament, one in Romans chapter four, verse four. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. That something due is this death in the passage, and another in here today. This term has been understood as a financial debt or sin in a moral sense. The translation we usually say "trespasses" originated from William Tyndall, who translated the Bible into English. So, if you were right, if you were raised in pre, in a Presbyterian church, church or Baptist church, I'm not so sure about Baptist church, but. If you are raised in a in a Presbyterian church, you might pray this prayer as "That's not trespasses." So we are saying trespasses. Some church, other churches may pray this petition as that. And um, for some, this is this is. A very critical point, but for others, it will be okay. It's up to you. There's a joke regarding this. While business owners pray debts because they are more interested in their debts than their sins, land owners pray trespasses because trespassing bothers them. Okay. I didn't mean of. I didn't mean to offend anyone. Okay, it's a joke. Okay, just joke. Whether we pray debts or trespasses, what the word implies here is that we, everyone, have unfulf- unfulfilled obligations toward God and our neighbors. We have debts. That we cannot repay, and asking for forgiveness is all that we can do. We have debts 
we cannot repay. And for us, asking for forgiveness to God is the only option. It's the only thing we can do. We owe God. We have unpaid debts. And we have failed to pay. We would like to conceive of ourselves as forgivers, but we need to remember that we are creatures, we are created, and we are who need God's forgiveness. Like Romans chapter 3, verse 23 states, states, Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Well, we acknowledge that we all here and outside, we all have sinned. That's what the Bible is telling today. Well, we ask God first, so it's not to forgive wrongdoers against us, but to be forgiven by God. Doing so, we stand against our self Righteousness. <sighs> If I'm wrong, please just let me know, okay? After church, okay? Uh, when I came to the United States in 2016, uh, after that, uh, I had a sort of orientation meeting with several international students and Uh, several American students at the seminary. And then while we were talking about, uh, one, of st- one of students just uh, came to me and told me that, hey, Pastor Chu, mm-hmm, I know you are coming from Korea. Yeah, I know, yeah. Because you also co- came from Korea. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so please be careful when you have a, a situation with anyone else. Please be careful to say, I'm sorry. I didn't understand what he was talking about, so what do you mean? You don't want me to say I'm sorry to anyone else? Okay. Um, If you say, he said, if you say I'm sorry to anyone else, and that could imply that you, you, you are doing something wrong. So let me tell you, okay. Uh, When I was in Korea, my country, we have been taught that, okay, if you have, if you, if I, if you have anything else with anyone else, just say, I'm sorry, whether it's your fault or not. Three things, three sentences are important for us. That is what I have been taught. from my parents and from teachers. Hello. First, hello. And second, thank you. And third one is? Oh. Have you been to my country before? <laughs> yes. Hello. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Very simple. That is what I have been taught. But when I heard about that in the United States first time, I was a a little bit perplexed. Because for me, saying I'm sorry is very very common. Whether whether I'm wrong or not, whether that's my fault or not, it was very common to me. But he just told me that, okay, be careful, or just try not to say I'm sorry in any cases. Because if you say I'm sorry, that means that you will acknowledge that you are wrong. That's your fault. Okay, again, if you think I'm wrong, please just let me know after church, okay? That is what I was told when I was in the seminary. 
we may just simply say I'm sorry and then we may just simply ask forgiveness or we may just claim that okay I'm innocent we may come before God and say okay God hello how are you today and then I think I'm innocent so I am I have nothing to tell you today goodbye That was my my prayer in my very early when I was a very young child. I didn't know how to pray and then I thought that I did nothing wrong to God especially. Before we think before we conceive of ourselves as forgivers, just let us think ourselves as those who need the forgiveness of our Father. I don't want you to, th- I'm not telling you that we have to feel guilty for everything. Please don't. Un- Don't misunderstand that. What I'm telling you is when we pray this prayer, we acknowledge that we are sinners. We need His pardon and forgiveness before we try to forgive others. This prayer teaches us and reminds us that whether we or not agree with, whether or not we are glad to admit we are sinners. We, and we cannot live without His mercy, His pardon, and His forgiveness. As we seek God's forgiveness, we acknowledge that we are dependent upon God, who is our Father, who provides our daily bread, and who forgives our debts and sins. And then, and then we can be forgivers, and then we can forgive after we are to be forgiven for our debts. Do we have tornado now? No. no? Okay. Thank you. Oh. We forgive our debtors, wrongdoers, not because we are generous or merciful, but because we are forgiven. I know. I know you are generous and you are very merciful. But the reason why we forgive others is not because of ourselves, but because of God's mercy and grace. As we examine ourselves as forgiven sinners, now we imitate the one who forgives us. Like Kim mentioned during the children's message, Psalm chapter 103, verses 8 to 12. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love perfectly opposite to me. I am not merciful and gracious. I am very fast to anger and abounding. No, not abounding. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, not repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgression, transgressions transgressions from us. If you want, you may read this Psalm chapter 130 after church.
And please just remind why we are reading this, who who we are, and who God is, who our Father is. In our forgiving and being forgiven, God creates the new community of His people. As we are ones who receive a gift of forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, we also share the gift we are given by Him with our debtors. I'm not saying that forgiveness is natural. I'm not saying that forgiveness is cheap. No, it's not natural, it's not cheap. If we don't forgive one another, however, if we don't ask, if we don't seek God's forgiveness, we will be unable to live one another in this new community which God creates. So, sisters and brothers, to ask God's forgiveness and to forgive others, first remember whose, whose children we are. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 to 45, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. I usually tell my children especially when they are out of house. Remember whose children you are, you are. Because almost everyone, almost everyone in town knows who they are. You know, uh, my father is a pastor too. So when I was a very young child, my mom always told me I said told, but I felt like she just warned me for my behavior. Because everyone knew who I was. So that we may be children of our Father in heaven. Remember whose children we are. If you come uh, here with your parents or you, with your children, let them remind that whose children, whose parents they are. We are God's children. We are our Heavenly Father's children. And second, remember whose disciples we are. First, in First Peter. Chapter uh, 2, verses uh, 23 to 25. When he, Christ, was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you, you have been healed. Remember whose disciples we are. Whose disciples we are. And what our teacher has done for us and for the whole world. And finally, remember how many times our Lord has Forgiven us. Again, like Kim said, Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 22, Peter came and said to him, Lord, if, uh, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Remember how many times our Father has forgiven us. We all know that, I believe, what we have done, what we are doing, what we are thinking. 
And then we, I believe, know how many times, how many times, God has forgiven us. As He has forgiven us, and as we have asked His forgiveness, His mercy, and His pardon, and we will forgive others too. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing congregationally, our closing hymn together.